Welcome to the July edition of Curious Coach. I've decided to move to video because I often spend hours typing up what's in my mind and changing and editing the word and editing, editing, editing in links. And I decided that actually, why don't I just speak it as it is and see how it goes. You can give me the feedback. I have been experimenting uh, today, in fact, I run a group for the CIPD, uh, which is special interest coaching. So HR professionals who are interested in coaching and I offer up various experiments. And today we explored two quotes. There were three, but of course we got overexcited with, with two of them. So the first one is if things are going to get uncomfortable, first, let's get comfortable. And this came up after I did a session with someone who had expressed they wanted to challenge themselves. And as we came to a point where we could challenge, and there's another story about challenge. I think I've talked about that before. Uh, it might not be the right word. However, they want to stretch or get out of their comfort zone. And I'd, so I'd invited an experiment and I'd said, how do you feel about an experiment? And the instant reaction was, I just need to go to the loo first. And his thinking was, if things are going to get uncomfortable, I need to be comfortable in order to do that. And that's kind of a basic like bio need. But when we explore that wider in the coaching uh, sphere, this is all about trust and safety and rapport and the relationship. Because if we're not comfortable in that conversation in the first place, how are we possibly going to get uncomfortable where that juicy learning might be? So See, what do you think about about that philosophy around comfort and discomfort? The next one was, there is only one person in the room, yet we hear and feel so many others. And this particular quote pops up for me when there are people coming to the session and all of their issues appear to be about other people and things that other people are doing. However, it's not just the client, it might be us as well. Where are we coming from when we're going into that session and what context are we in? This can happen if you're coaching in your organisation, for example, um, or you know the industry or the field very well and you know the context so well, you might actually overlook things because it's a given both both you and the client know those things uh there are also cultural contexts as well that we might uh, miss or we might assume and so it makes me think as well about the um seven-eyed model that gets used in supervision so all the different relationships between coach and client coach and supervisor client and organization coach and organisation, depending on what the relationship is. So there are so many things at play and yet we can only coach the person in the room. So the cleaner we are with that person and enabling them to explore their world themselves is how we can move that forward. Now, the question we didn't, sorry, the quote we didn't get to explore was the advice giver is so frequently the best receiver. What do you think about that one? We didn't get to explore that. Um, we know there's a lot of talk about giving advice. Um, when we ask that question to clients, if you were to give a friend of yours advice about this situation, what advice would you give them? And they usually have a very quick answer to that question. And then when you invite them to think about that, using that advice for themselves, it often stops them in their tracks. So what do you think to that? I look forward to seeing you next month. Have a good, enjoyable summer.